Hi, this is Riddhi Joshi and we are going to talk about the ECG changes with drugs and electrolyte. Let's see potassium importance in our body. It is always needed for normal electrical activity of our heart. So normal value is 3.5 to 5.0 milli equivalents per liter. 95% of body's potassium is found inside the cells. With the, uh, with the other it is reminder in the blood. When the potassium levels fall below the normal level means if it is less than 3.5 we uh, recognize it as a hypokalemia. So sometimes we are having uh, different symptoms for that. Let's see about some potassium deficit symptoms. When the potassium is less than 3.5 milli uh, equivalent per liter, so we have some mnemonics for this. Remember, I am a sick vault. So with A, it is alkalosis. So patient will have alkalotic. Patient is having shallow respiration. Patient is having shallow respiration. Patient will feel irritable. So we can notice in his face. Patient is always feel confused, drowsy. Patient is having weakness and the fatigue. If they are having potassium deficiency, they have fatigue, weakness, arrhythmia. Arrhythmia in terms of tachycardia or bradycardia will be there. Patient is feeling lethargic and they have thready pulse. And intestinal mobility is also affected. It is decreased. Patient may feel nausea, vomiting and some ileus problem. So this all are the potassium deficiency means hypokalemic symptoms. Let's see some basics of cardiac myocytes. When the cardiac myocyte is in resting state, it is always negative. When it is contracting, it is always have a positive polarities. So remember that. During depolarization, it will be travel from negative to positive. So it is denotes ventricular, ventricular or atrial depolarization. During the repolarization, the polarity will be from positive to negative. So this is the basic of resting stage of cardiac myocyte and the depolarization and repolarization. This will always helpful for ECG diagnosis. Let's see about hypokalemia. So when there is hypokalemia, the level will be less than 3.5 milli equivalent per liter. Remember, potassium is a vital regulating for the normal electrical activity of a heart. So when there is a decreased extracellular potassium, it causes myocardial hyperexcitability. So because of this, we get re-entrant arrhythmia. So when there is an extracellular potassium is decreased, remember that the potassium is negative. So if it is negative decreased, positive increased inside. And because of that, we have hyperexcitability. And hyperexcitability cause reentrant arrhythmia. So, what is reentrant arrhythmia? It is arrhythmia caused by depolarization of SA node. So, once this circle of SA node depolarization is occur, again it will start from this SA node. It won't go to the other AV node or bundle of He's. So, this is called reentrant arrhythmia. So let's see some ECG changes with hypokalemia. So first is ST depression. So ST is denotes ventricular repolarization. But due to hyperexcitability, it won't get time to repolarization. And if it is not repolarized, it will get ST depression. When there is a ST depression, as we have seen in our earlier ECG video, that ST depression and the T wave inversion is occurred due to the lack of oxygen supply. If we have hyper excitable myocardium, it will pump more and lack of oxygen will be there. So because of that ST depressed, shallow T waves. 
let's see about the PR interval changes the PR interval it will become this is P Q R S so this is PR interval it is slightly get prolonged how PR interval it denotes travel from SA node to AV node so it is time of, of impulses travel from atria to ventricle here the conduction velocity is decreased and because of that we have prolonged PR interval the T wave is get shallow or flattened because ventricular won't get repolarization and because of this we get shallow T waves remember if the patient is having hypokalemia it may lead to the atrial flutter it is always life threatening so as a physiotherapist what is our duty it is our duty to stop the exercise because myocardial oxygen supply is less and we are still going for the exercise so we need to immediately stop the exercise and call the physician and refer the patient to their physician as a physiotherapist this is our main duty let's see about the hyperkalemia so when there is hyperkalemia the potassium level will be increased greater than 5.0 milli equivalent per liter remember the potassium is a vital for regulating the normal electrical activity of a heart so increased extracellular potassium reduce myocardial excitability remember as we have seen earlier potassium is negative if it is increased more negativity will be there so extracellular myocardial potassium is reduced myocardial excitability it will depress both pacemaker and the conducting tissues so because of this it will lead to a progressive worsening hyperkalemia and therefore we have impulses generation from SA node to AV node to bundle of He's Purkinje's and reduce the conduction system and the conduction velocity and it may lead to the bradycardia and the conduction block if the conduction block is there ultimately it will lead to the cardiac arrest so let's see some changes in the ECG with hyperkalemia when the SA node is paralyzed so atria is paralyzed impulses travel from AV node uh, Purkinje's and his is decreased so because of this impulses traveling is decreased the prolonged PR interval will be there there will be widen or the flattened P wave why because of more negativity the P wave flat there is a prolonged PR interval due to decreased in conduction impulses from SA node to AV node widen QRS complex the QRS complex is denoted by ventricular depolarization but here ventricular depolarization is affected that's why we are getting widen QRS there will be tall and peak T wave why T wave is denoted by at ventricular repolarization so when ventricle is getting hyper repolarization so it will be tall T wave the ST segment get depressed because they are having bradycardia and the ST segment is ventricular repolarization but there will be problem with the conduction uh, from SA node to AV node and that's why the repolarization is also affected lack of oxygen supply and therefore we are having depressed ST segment so this all are about the hyperkalemia ECG changes let's see about hypercalcemia so normal serum corrected calcium is 2.1 to 2.6 millimole per liter the calcium is needed for contraction of our heart so if it is increased calcium increased heart rate so hypercalcemia will cause loss of the excitability in cell membrane so because of this patient may feel fatigue weakness nausea constipation 
lethargy, anorexia, kidney stones because they have increased calcium level. If the patient is having some kind of problem like hypercalcemia, then there will be some ECG changes we can see. First of all, it will be observed wave. So it is J wave. The J wave is positive deflection. It is denoted by opson wave. There will be shortened QT segment and depressed T wave and varying degree of heart block may be there. So if the T, uh, T wave is depressed because they have a repolarization problem. If it is delayed repolarization, T wave is depressed and the shortened QT interval, the QT interval it is denoted by ventricular depolarization to ventricular repolarization. So ventricular depolarization to ventricular repolarization is affected because there is a loss of excitability and therefore we have shortened QT interval. Let's see about the hypocalcemia. So when there is hypocalcemia, decreased calcium, the level will be less than 2.1. So when there is a decreased calcium, remember calcium is needed for contractility. If contractility is decreased, then it leads to the hyper excitation of the nerve because heart will try to beat more and more and that's why we have hyper excited nerves. So there are some symptoms of hypocalcemia. Let's see it. Remember the cats of hypocalcemia. When there is a cats, first remember the convulsion. Patient may feel the convulsions, arrhythmia, titani, stridor and the spasm, spasm and the stridor. Let's see some ECG changes for the hyper, hypocalcemia. When there is hypocalcemia, there will be prolonged QT. So QT is denote ventricular depolarization to repolarization. Here the ventricular systole is decreased, decreased heart rate, prolonged QT, prolonged ST or horizontal depression of the ST. So prolonged ST is due to the late repolarization of the nerves. The ST segment always denoted by ventricular repolarization but because of decreased calcium repolarization is also affected and that's why we have prolonged ST. Let's see some ECG changes with the drug like digoxin. Digoxin is a class is cardiac glycoside and it is anti-arrhythmic drug. The main mechanism of action of digoxin is it's a positive inotropic drug. Inotropic means increase the contractility. It increase the automaticity of the heart. It have negative dromotropy. Dromotropy means slowing the conduction of AV node and increase the vasovagal tone. So remember that digoxin is positive inotropic, increase the contractility. So it give some few contraction but with the better contraction. Let's see some sign and symptoms with the digoxin. So to remember this, remember dig fast. Dig means distractibility. Patient is feeling more distraction. And discretion means patient is feeling that he is having some problem with the judgment. So he cannot judge anything. Patient may feel grandiosity. Grandiosity means Patient is feeling that he is the superior of everyone. Patient is having flight ideas. Activity is increased. Sleep deficiency will be there. And patient is become more talkative. So this is dig fast. Let's see some ECG changes with digoxin. When patient is taking digoxin, few but which contraction? Better contraction. So, ST segment depression, it resembles as reverse kick effect, reduced T wave and shortened QT interval. If there is a toxicity of digoxin, 
T wave inversion will be there and erythema will be there. Let's see some more digoxin ECG changes. When there is digoxin patient is taking, it is a positive ionotropic drug. So there will be shortened QT interval. Shortening of atrial and the ventricular refractory period producing shortened QT interval. ST depressed ST depressed because secondary repolarization abnormality will be there and the T wave inversion will be there. Increased vasovagal effect at the AV node cause prolonged PR interval. Let's see some ECG changes with the other antiarrhythmic drug. Drugs like quinidine, it is used for correction of the rhythm like atrial fibrillation is there. Quinidine is used for that. Prokinamide, it is used for supraventricular or ventricular arrhythmia. So, these both drugs are class 1 antiarrhythmic agent. So, because of this, there will be notch P wave, ST depressed, shortened Q, T interval, and prolonged QRS duration. There will be wide notched P wave, wide QRS, depressed ST and the U wave will be there because they have slower depolarization as well as slower repolarization. When there is a depolarization and repolarization problem, therefore we have problem like prolonged QRS duration, shortened QT interval depressed ST segment and the U wave. Prolonged cardiac action potential will be there and therefore we have prolonged QT interval on the surface of the ECG. So when there is a problem with the arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation is there, patient is taking quinidine. So because of this there will be uh, sodium entry they, they don't allow the sodium to enter immediately so because of that there will be action potential and the depolarization will be there so depolarization is decreased action potential is decreased and that's why we have the shortened QT interval and depolarization as well as the repolarization problem because there is a problem with their ECG Guys, if you have any doubts related to any topics in NPTE or PCE, please let me know in my comment section so I can make videos on that.